Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share about the four principles of bottleneck management. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. What is the bottleneck? A bottleneck represents processes or operations that have limited capacity or constraint. A constraint is anything that limits a system from achieving its goal or a level of performance desired. A bottleneck has the lowest effective capacity of any operation in the system and thus limits the system's output. To determine the bottleneck in a production system, simply identify the station with the slowest process time. The bottleneck time is the process time of the slowest workstation. In this case, process C is our bottleneck process is the process is the slowest workstation. The managers must focus significant attention on it. We present four principles of bottleneck management. Principle number one. Release work orders to the system at the pace set by the bottleneck's capacity. The theory of constraints utilizes the concept of drum, buffer, rope, to aid in the implementation of bottleneck and non-bottleneck scheduling. Drum buffer rope DBR is a method of synchronizing production to the constraint while minimizing inventory and work in process. Drum is the constraint itself since it sets the drumbeat pace for the other processes. Also, the drumbeat signals the upstream operations what to produce and tells the downstream operations what to expect. Buffer is the stockpile of WIP in front of the constraint. It is a precaution to keep the constrained resource running at the highest possible capacity since it determines the output of the entire system. Rope is the limitations placed on production in upstream operations which are necessary to prevent flooding the constraint with excess work in progress WIP which are above its capacity. The rope is a signal generated by the constraint indicating that some amount of inventory has been consumed. This in turn triggers an identically sized release of inventory into the process. The role of the rope is to maintain throughput without creating an accumulation of excess inventory. Principle number two. Lost time at the bottleneck represents lost capacity. For the whole system, this principle implies that the bottleneck should always be kept busy with work. Well-trained and cross-trained employees and inspections prior to the bottleneck can reduce lost capacity at a bottleneck. Principle number three. Increasing the capacity of non-bottleneck stations has no impact on the system's overall capacity. Working faster than a non-bottleneck station may just create extra inventory, with all of its adverse effects. This implies that non-bottlenecks should have planned idle time. Extra work or setups at non-bottleneck stations will not cause delay, which allows for smaller batch sizes and more frequent product changeovers at non-bottleneck stations. Principle number four. Increasing the capacity of the bottleneck increases. Capacity for the whole system. Managers should focus improvement efforts on the bottleneck. Bottleneck capacity may be improved by various means, including offloading some of the bottleneck operations to another workstation, increasing capacity of the bottleneck by adding resources, working longer or working faster, subcontracting, developing alternative routings, and reducing setup times. Even when managers have process and quality variability under control, changing technology, personnel, products, product mixes, and volumes can create multiple and shifting bottlenecks. Identifying and managing bottlenecks is a required operations task, but by definition, bottlenecks cannot be eliminated. A system will always have at least one. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye. See you next time.